building a digital marketing strategy is difficult. Building a good digital marketing strategy is even difficult. Being, uh, building a digital marketing strategy that stands out of the crowd is close to impossible most of the times. And still, John Bernard, the Global Digital Marketing Director of Mozilla, did it. And he's going to take the stage right now in order to uh, share his story from inception to launch and beyond. He led the, digital, the Global Digital Marketing Campaign for uh, Firefox OS. John, the floor is yours. Thank you. Buna Diminazza. I'm so glad it's not in the afternoon, otherwise I would have had to have learned another word. Um, hello, good morning. It's great to be here in Bucharest. My name is John Bernard. I run marketing for Firefox OS for Mozilla. And I'm going to spend the next 15 or 20 minutes talking about our journey. What's great about How to Web is you are going to get different keynotes over the next two days, different stories, different hints and tips which will help you in your business lives, whether you're a startup, whether you work in the digital sector, or whether you work for a tech company. Hopefully, you'll take a lot away over the next two days, and you might pick up one or two things here as a result too. So by way of introduction, who are Mozilla? Mozilla are a big open source organization. Big is a relative term. 1,200 people or so work for Mozilla. Mission-based organization who care about the web. We love the web as an open, free resource. But you guys probably know us more for that, for the Mozilla browser, for the Firefox browser used by something like 500 million people globally. I'm not going to get you to stand up, but can I have a quick show of hands? Who uses Firefox here? OK, great. This might take a bit of time. Can we add a bit more time onto the schedule? One, two, three. That's great to know. Here in Romania, um, Firefox is number one, number two. We are uh, a browser of choice for many people because we're fast, because we're trusted, and because people regard us as being safe. And that's really the DNA of, of Mozilla and of Firefox. You can see here some of the stats. Again, by way of introduction, we're up against the titans of the industry, Microsoft and Google. If you see me at the show, if you work for a more competitive industry, please let me know because I'm genuinely interested. Um, it's hard, but it's fun. And we really want that resource that you will use the internet to be open. And that's why we keep doing what we're doing. So Firefox OS, putting a mobile ecosystem onto devices. People often ask me, well, why? There's Android out there, there's iOS out there. As Mozilla, we do see this pivot now to mobile. And you'll see lots of stats about number of people coming online. But the stat that resonates with me is this one. Over the next three years, 70% of people, not just in Europe, but across the world, Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia, many people will have their first online experience through one of these devices. Um, so as a company, we really pivoted about a third of the company to our mission in mobile. When we launched 11 years ago Firefox, there really was just one other alternative, Internet Explorer. Again, we have big organizations that we're looking to compete against in mobile, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. What we really wanted to do, though, is, as we saw 11 years ago with Firefox, we saw this uneven playing field, and we saw an opportunity to many different groups of people to make that playing field slightly more even. Different groups, for example, like developers, many of you who are here in the room, giving you the opportunity to write once in HTML5 and then put your app on a store. Operators, manufacturers, giving them another option, no licenses. Users, it's really painful sometimes if you go from one operating system to another, for example, porting your apps across, your contacts. We want to make that really easy. So these different groups of people we're really looking to to help make their, their online lives easier. The other reason we're doing this is it took something like 22 years to get 2 billion people online. But the next billion are going to come online in the next five years. So the rate of acceleration of people coming online, again on devices, is going to be so much faster. And we'd like to be relevant and have a voice there. So what have we got? The product, Firefox OS. You can see. We call it the most exciting new platform in mobile. And I'll talk a bit more about our story to date. Um, we have three or four different target markets. We have first-time smartphone users. Uh, we have feature phone upgraders. There are many people in different markets in Europe between 
20 and around 70% of people are still using feature phones, so we think we can attract them. Firefox fans, many of you in the room, many people that are already using Firefox do love the brand, and so really wanted to, to attract those. And that led to some of the initial markets that we launched in, where we already have a pretty strong presence with Firefox. We had three different strategies or three different benefits that we went to the end user with, and so that was almost our platform. So we're now at the end of 2012. We have a platform, we have a name, we're ready to release this into the world. So talking to operators, talking to other developers, the feedback was pretty good. So once you have a platform, you then have to look at bringing it to market. Um, what was interesting, listening to the last presentation, T-shirts, uh, my very first sales director in my very first job once regarded marketing as, yeah, you guys, you just make t-shirts. Little did I know, some 20 years later, someone's written a book saying, that's the one thing you should do. So uh, I'm going to be buying a book later on and sending it to a, an ex-colleague in London. Um, what's also interesting is here's another slide with six pillars. Uh, that is a coincidence. We didn't have a quick hack before and talk about putting this up. But when you have a product, it's really important to bring it to market. And at Mozilla, we're very lucky. We have a couple of unique traits, which I'll come to, one of which is our community. And that's one of the things that I'll talk about, a learning that we had during this journey. And I'm going to touch on these really quickly. So brand awareness. So you've already seen the Firefox logo. We wanted to compare ourselves against Twitter, um, against Skype to see if the brand resonates. Would people actually buy our devices? And the answer was yes, people would. They saw our brand as fun. Again, the word trusted I use, safe. Um, from research that we did, people thought that, yeah, they would actually buy a phone if a phone was available in the marketplace. So we created this Fox. Um, you may not have seen this before, but certainly today, because we have a presence and as a sponsor, you'll see the fox around. And we created this. Um, because we're being filmed, I won't talk about how much we paid, but we paid an agency called Wolf Olins, uh, not a small amount of money, and it was fantastically well spent because they created this whole imagery and iconography around the fox. Um, with the Mozilla, the Firefox logo, you never see the fox's face. It's hidden but we unleashed the fox so you can see its face. And that was quite key, creating a new brand. And especially for the startups here, creating something that can resonate with people is, is really vital, but you know that. We had different uh, illustrations of the fox to convey different moods. Um, one of the learnings though, first learning of the day here is, we changed our logo on the point we launched. Um, don't try and do too much too soon. Uh, there was no reason to change our Firefox logo. You can see it, it's actually, and this is us bearing our soul here, it's, we learned from our mistakes and we're happy to talk about it because when you create lots of retail activities and when you work with partners such as Telecom uh, and Movistar and you've created lots of material in store and then you change your logo and you have to do everything again, it, it can be uh, complicated and lead to some difficult conversations. So don't try and do too much too soon. Um, let's move on. So the second of our six pillars um, is obviously our developer engagement or developer marketing. We created with a company called Geeks Phone something called uh, the Geeks Phone, the Firefox OS Keyon. So we produced 10,000 of these devices and what's really key in making a mobile ecosystem are apps. People often forget that when Apple launched the iPhone in 2007, they didn't have an app store. That organically grew to the success it is today. Um, so we created the Firefox Marketplace. And so we spoke to lots of big named apps and brands that you already know. But what was key for us as Firefox OS was we spoke to lots of local brands. So here in Romania, for example, if you take one of our devices, you will see lots of local apps that you may not get on other stores. And that was one of our USPs. We really wanted to bring the brand on every local country and have that local flavor. Uh, press, very important. Um, we decided to launch ourselves at something called MWC, which is a big mobile phone trade show. Really good results. And that, again, in early 2013, just set the stage for us to go live into um, launching into marketplace. Community. Our community, our volunteers, are really the DNA of Mozilla. We would not be where we are without the thousands of people who give up their time to help code, 
but actually they do a lot more than help on the back end. They're actually people who represent the company, company spokespeople, um, and they are like us, grouped together as something called Mazillions. We're all Mazillions together. Um, and we should be call them and refer to them as our champions, which leads me to uh, the next learning. Again, working in tech, working online, don't underestimate the power of the community. Again, I talk about the DNA of our community, how essential they are in the work that we do. It's a fantastic sort of resource. It's, it's part of you as a brand, so utilize that and build a community. It's not easy, it goes on word of mouth, it has to be trusted, it has to be genuine. But I think if you can start to build a community for your products or your services, you almost build an army of people who will really advocate your brand and be fantastic people to, to count on. Moving on, this is something very, very unique for Mozilla, our own media. We have, as you launch the browser, some advertising that's available. Normally we use that once a year because advertising is something that you have it on the internet, but again, open, free. We don't tend to advertise to people very often, once a year for some fundraising. But we use the bottom of that Google search bar as it was with our partners. So when we launched with Telecom in Poland, we had a call to action. So the 35, 40% of people every day going online saw something about a new phone which they'd never heard of. Lots of different markets, we implemented this. Social media, it's interesting, from a marketing point of view, social media gets talked about a lot. I often talk about it fifth or sixth. It's great having likes, it's great having followers, but what do you do with that? What we decided to do was use it as a tool, not to sell devices, but to engage and talk with our end users, and that worked really well for us, and we've continued that to this day. And moving on, retail, channel marketing is something which may not be relevant for everyone in this room, but if you work with an operator or a partner who has a retail outlet or a retail presence, as we do just down the road here uh, in the mall, it's something you need to work on and have a plan. So that sets the scene. We had our pillars, we put everyone together, and we collectively had something called a wave. So different people within Mozilla who weren't used to working in the mobile phone environment were brought together with the whole aspect of launching these first devices. So we're fast forwarding now to July 2013. We chose those four markets, one with telecom launching in Poland. We chose two devices, the ZTE Open and something called the Alcatel One Touch Fire. They're maybe not the devices for everyone here in this room, but in Poland, in Latin America especially, these devices work very well, sub $100, and again, opening it up to new smartphone users. We launched. We launched in Madrid our first device. We had a press conference. We had lots of branding. We really took over the store and tried to generate this wave, this buzz of excitement. We had about 20 people from our volunteer base in Madrid who dressed up, spoke to the press. Again, we're really, really getting involved in our launch as part of the team. We did some advertising across Latin America in store, across Poland. This is in English. Um, but that was the creative that we used with telecom. And then we started to see how this Firefox OS phone was being received by the marketplace. We set up online training for people that had never heard of Firefox. And then, as I've mentioned before, we unleashed the Fox. We showed the face of the Fox. This is actually in Warsaw. Um, we took over some big billboards. And we did things that, as Mozilla, we'd never done before. We'd never really advertised before. So as an organization, this was really new to us as a company. Um, to cover train stations, that's in Warsaw as well. I think one of the keys is also having an integrated campaign. With marketing, it's all very well great doing PR. It's great having some retail presence, but pulling it all together as a strategic plan, you will get much more value for any activity you do. Again, using our volunteer base to really amplify that, new, that noise on the streets, in stores, throughout the country. And after we did our first set of launches, we undertook some quick research. I actually doubted those numbers, but it was done by an independent house. And as you can see, our brand awareness, aided brand awareness, so the question is, have you heard of Firefox OS? Three out of four people said yes, they, they had heard of us as a brand, which from a starting point of zero, again competing with these huge, huge, um, competing with Android, 85% market share globally, that's hard. 
um, and I did brand awareness, was really good. So on the back of that, we then decided, right, we've built up some momentum. Let's go work with Telecom and Movistar and launch in some more countries. So we then looked at a number of different launches in Q4 of 2013, much of the same activity. We used events to talk to the industry, which then led us to talking to end users. We looked at more advertising, lots of local advertising across Hungary, um, different types of advertising done in conjunction with the operators. So again, it was just raising this brand that, that nobody had heard of, but people may have been familiar with because many of them used us on the desktop. We continued online. We continued to bring new partners in. So for example, in Italy, we worked with Telecom Italia to launch with them. In Brazil, we went live in Mexico. All the learnings that we had, these six pillars, we used, we worked together using our community to build this brand. And at the end of the second wave of activity, again, we did some research. And our research told us the same story. There was still an appetite for people to want and to buy these devices. We can't talk about sales. We never talk about sales, but sometimes our partners, our operator partners, release data and then we jump on that. So what was the result? This first slide has been publicly announced by Movistar. That's incredible for a startup in an industry, which again I've said is very competitive, to get 9% and 12% is pretty good going with budgets that are probably one hundredth of what our competition had. In Uruguay, it went even better. We were selling out of devices in big markets like Mexico, like Brazil. So for 2014, we decided, right, let's go big now. Let's go for seven huge countries. Let's get distribution out there. Um, so although we chose these seven countries, using the platform and the pillars, we actually went in a lot more. We started at MWC. That looks pretty busy, doesn't it, as a stage? Boom! That's a busy stage. You can actually see, I'm not sure if this, the light will work, but this chap here is actually one of our, um, one of the members of the team, and he looks really upset. We've got this packed booth, but that's really industry acceptance. This is a year after we'd launched, and now people had heard about us and wanted to distribute Firefox OS in their countries. Obviously, we talk about the Fox, and we unleashed the Fox some more. These are all images that were live. That was a lot of countries. We did a lot of work. Many people were close to breaking down. And this is actually my next learning, or the next learning that we had, which is know how much is too much. One of those countries we launched, if I go back to the last slide, was with a retailer. And it was nice being popular because of the way that our model works and because of the fact that we were developer-friendly, we were operator friendly and we were trying to change and disrupt the industry. Lots of people wanted to launch devices and we weren't a massive team and yet lots of different global operators know when you've reached your limit um, because ultimately you want to give a really good service to your operator partners or whoever the partners are that you work with. Um, we decided, well, things are going well so far. We looked at TV. I'm sure some of you have heard of What Does the Fox Say? Um, that viral hit. Uh, we actually have a 30-second advert, which we're not going to show today, because every time I see it, um, a little part of me dies. But no, that's not true. It's a brilliant campaign, and uh, we just started to go bigger for Firefox OS and started to do more ambitious activities because we saw this growth across 2014. We launched in really South America, plus Spain, plus Poland. We then moved to look at Southeast Asia, India, Bangladesh, big untapped markets. Again, with a device that I showed you a slide which talks about sub $100. We launched a $25 smartphone in India. We also launched in markets like Central America. Um, people referred us the $25 device as the new iPhone. And what's interesting is if you looked at the specs of the first iPhone, which again was launched in 2007, and this device, they'd actually caught up, which was interesting, albeit eight years later. But the growth continued. New markets, Macedonia with Telecom, Uruguay, America Morville in Mexico, big brands. We launched with a company called Grameen Phone in Bangladesh. Um, a learning that I don't have as a slide if you are ever in Bangladesh presenting at an event, 
they let fireworks off inside. So you can't quite see me at the back there, but I had a ringing in my ear for about a month. Uh, but the launch went well, and we sold out of our devices in about four days. Growth continued. The industry acceptance continued. We launched now 17 devices. We have launched, rather, 17 devices with different manufacturers, and I think five or six with telecom including in Greece, in Macedonia, in Poland, in Germany with the Kongstar brand. And what's this? It's a slide with lots of numbers on. But the title slide and the slide, the theme of the presentation is breaking out of other. Some of you who may work in research may know what that means, but the long title is breaking out of the other category according to market share figures. And what you can see here is we actually maintained three, five percent market share, but we broke out of what you can see is others at the top there, which meant that we were out of the other category. We were actually an established brand. We'd actually made it. And we saw this. I've just pulled the stat from Mexico, but we did this and we achieved this in a multitude of markets in Latin America, across other markets in Bangladesh, for example, um, which led to some success, which we were really pleased about. That's the end of the story. I normally stop there, but we are in 2015, and I've got one minute left. In 2015, we moved to Africa, and we really built on our work with the community and with our volunteer base, getting the next billion online. A lot of them are on the continent of Africa. So this is a snapshot because there's a whole presentation behind what we've done this year, um, but it's using the DNA of Mozilla, it's using our community, it's really attracting people who are getting online for the first time. Again, it's hard. How do you talk to people when they're not online and they've got no idea who you are? What's interesting about Africa is that you don't have any Android habits formed. In Latin America, in Southeast Asia, friends or family of people who are buying devices for the first time will often ask, oh, which phone shall I buy? And people will often say, well, I've got this fantastic Android phone, you should buy that, and it's really cheap, go to the store. There's none of that in Africa. Um, so although I've talked about telecom a lot, there are other partners who we work with. Um, but yeah, we've even launched here in Romania. So thank you for your time on the money, and uh, I think maybe we'll take some questions. So, any questions for John? We've got one question over there. Say it out loud and I'll repeat it in the microphone for everyone to hear it. What are the differences between Android, Microsoft, well, Windows Phone, and Firefox OS? So, the main difference, so I, I can't compare Android with Windows Phone, you guys, you guys can do that um, in terms of, you know, I don't know the intricacies of how they are both different, but where we're different is we have the Firefox browser, which we talk about as our safe, trusted, fast experience. We, there are licenses with some other operators out there, so we built something called Gaia, which is the back end of Firefox OS up, we own the stack. So what that means, it's got a lighter footprint. It means the phone in theory should be faster. Because there are no licenses, in theory the phone should be cheaper. If you were to look at a Firefox OS device next to an Android device. Um, but in terms of an operator, end users, the phone's much more customizable. It's an open platform, so you can do a lot more with it. And there are revenue models with the operators that are very different, especially with the marketplace. So there are a multitude of different ways where we're different to both Android and Windows Phone, depending on which group of people you're talking to. Thank you. One more question over there. Like the Ubuntu Edge. So I came from Ubuntu. I actually left Ubuntu to come to Mozilla and ran their marketing for four years. So I know a little bit. Um, and I can tell you about Ubuntu Edge, but not on the camera. Um, so 
have we thought about doing something crowdsourced? So we have lots of conversations internally about lots of ideas. And I think next year, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk and we'll, we'll announce more activities next year, what we'll be doing. Um, the short answer is yes, we have thought about it. Um, again, I can't really say too much, but yes, we've thought about it. And there are companies out there, for example, Fairphone and others who are really interesting and have a, a mission and, and values really similar to ours. So, yes, but nothing's happened to date. Okay, thank you. That doesn't mean you can tweet, we're going to start crowdsourcing phones. But we're open to lots of things as people start tweeting. Any other questions? I see a hand over there. Hey, uh, here. Hello. So, I'm Stelian. Uh, I have uh, just a quick question. So, most of your phones are under $100. Most of them. We do have a device that's in my pocket, which is a device we launched in Japan, which was a high-end device, $600 device, called the FXO. But true, yeah, our strategy yeah. was entry-level devices. Our initial strategy was for emerging markets like Latin America, Southeast Asia. So, yeah, you're correct with the assertion that uh, initially our devices were entry-level. Yeah. So, how much of this uh, impacts actually your growth? Because people that are buying phones for $100 usually don't care what operating system has. So, how has that affected our growth being at the entry level? So, how do we measure ourselves? Um, Oh, so how do we measure ourselves against other, let's say, Android phones that are at the same price point? We we measure ourselves in terms of, well, there are two ways. The obvious one is sales. We look at market share data. Um, we can't share that with you on a stage, but operators will happily share that data. Uh, we compare really well. If you look at the performance of the device, it depends on the device. So Alcatel OneTouch, who produce devices, who are a really good partner of ours, they have something called the Pixie range of devices, which you can put Windows OS or Windows Phone, as it's now called, Firefox OS or Android. Um, we have our tests. We are a really transparent company. We don't, to use a, a word from the earlier presentation, we don't bullshit because we're so open. And our tests, when we looked at our operating system compared to others that are out there, our phones were really quick and work well on a really light platform, as I've mentioned because we've built this ourselves. So I can stand here and say our performance is great, our sales are great. I can't prove it to you today. I can't stand up and show you a slide. But if you talk to any of our operator partners, um, they will share and give you numbers and tell you how they think things are going. We've launched on the 1st of December, we will have launched in 50 countries. So I think the proof that people are still launching devices with us and launching more devices at that sub 100 level it is maybe proof that things are going quite well. There was one more question. I saw a hand here, or maybe the question has been answered. We're going to take the last question for John. It's over there. <coughs> uh, hi. I'm wondering about the, the marketplace. And you mentioned that there is a marketplace in Firefox, of course. Uh, how does it compare to Android, for example, and is is it much of a factor in sales? Uh, yes, it's a factor. Apps are really key, and we found that. And remember, we're a new operating system. We've only been going for two years and a bit, and but the market we're after. So yes, it's an impact more in mature markets. So for example, if you were a typical typical smartphone buyer here in Romania. I think the typical person would, so we don't sell devices with telecom today, so I can use telecom as an example. People would go into the store and they would probably say, does it have WhatsApp, can I get Viber, can I get Skype uh, on that device? So in mature markets, apps are really key. And I know Windows Phone had, in their history, it took them some time to get apps like WhatsApp. And I think now Instagram, I don't know, I think it's maybe in, in beta on um, Windows Phone. So in mature markets, uh, 
for smartphone devices, apps are really, really important, which is why we built the Firefox Marketplace. In emerging markets or in markets where people are buying their first phone or where they're used to using feature phones, where there's no app store, it's not as important as markets like Romania and other markets in Europe because people aren't used to downloading an app. People have maybe never downloaded an app before, or they've heard about it from their friends. So depending on which market you're talking about or which country, uh, the importance of apps on a smartphone varies. Are you staying for other questions? I am, yes. I'm here all week. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. If you're interested in finding out more and discussing more with John, he's going to have an Ask the Expert session and he'll be joined by his colleagues from uh, Mozilla as well, starting at 12.30 in uh, Studio Lounge 2. So if you want, just be there and talk with him.